Enter the Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. Week 12, rankings, debate by position. You want to jump to a position? Hit the time codes. They're down there for you, as are the list of rankings. If you don't give a shit what I have to say or what Jake has to say, you just look at the list and be like, those rankings, not using those. But I got your click anyway, so we're all good, all right? Smash a like to the episode, sub to Mayo Media Network, and I do want to let you know, 10 a.m. Eastern, Thanksgiving morning, me, Cuss, Jeff, Rob, Cam, best bets for Thanksgiving Day live on Mayo Media Network will not be available on the podcast feed only on the Mayo Media Network YouTube channel. So subscribe and set your reminders right now because that's going to be a disaster of a show. Probably pretty fun, but uh, wrangling those jabronis is going to be uh, quite a task for me. Two listeners leagues this week on DraftKings, both down in the description right now. One for Thanksgiving Day slate only, and then obviously the regular Week 12 DraftKings listeners league. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Jake Seeley, theathletic.com, getting ready for the weekend, getting ready for the holiday. You get to have a nice little break. I'm proud of you. I don't get a break, but you do. <laughs> it's a small break it's a what two or three day break so yeah still have to do the work on thanksgiving have to schedule that i basically try to figure figure it in during the halftime of the first game with a little bit of overlap in there so but after that friday saturday i'll, I'll get a little bit of a breather it's i got my second win next week i get your your you get yours like a week or two ago i get mine next week yeah but i i'm gonna be like burnt out again in like three weeks we'll have to get a third wave uh right around christmas time <laughs> maybe right after we'll see about that but Let's try to get these rankings right so people don't really have to do much. And hopefully there's no more injuries that just pop up out of nowhere and then kind of screw up with the rankings. If they do, if you sub to the newsletter, I'll have the full injury report in there. As always, hit that in the description. I'll have the up rankings updated on the same link so you can just check back whenever you want. Number one in the running back rankings for the week. Still got Austin Eckler up there. I, I like the matchup against Arizona, as we just saw on Monday night. They, they don't seem too keen on playing defense at this point. Henry, Barkley, <laughs> Jacobs, McCaffrey, Kenneth Walker, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, Travis itching against Baltimore and then Dalvin Cook at number 10 that goes into Elvin Kamara David Montgomery don't know the status of Justin Fields yet but I'm still good with Montgomery right there with Herbert out James Conner Damian Pierce Ramondre Stevenson Tony Pollard Najee Harris Jeff Wilson Jr. Devin Singletary and Aaron Jones no bye weeks gives us a bounty of running backs for the first time in ages Jake yeah, they are, and probably feels good for everybody, especially if you're trying to make that playoff stretch run here. But yeah, it's I'm looking, and I mean, there's names that we haven't gotten to yet that you were like, oh yeah, these guys are usually there because of the bye weeks. But uh, we got two next week, and then that terrible was that it was four six teams in that final one. Six. And then there are just so many valuable ones. Yeah, it's just that's that's awful. But I, I think so far, looking at your ranks, the only one I even have any pushback on is I'm not that high on Damian Pierce. Uh, I wasn't that high on him last week, although I wasn't as low as I should have been, as everybody should have been with how terrible it was. But I think that's the risk you run here, especially against Miami with, yeah, he's the bell cow, but it's not like he gets Austin Eckler volume in the passing game. And if things go sideways and they're passing and it's Davis Mills and this offense is broken and nothing looks right. And now that Nico Collins is kind of a thing, Damian Pierce isn't getting quite as much use. I'd like, I just feel better even with the split with Tony Pollard. I feel better even with the split with Ron J. Stevenson. I feel better with Najee Harris and no Jalen Warren. So I'm not killing them. But at this point, if like if I was into the situation and you could have teams like this because nobody's on a buy, if it was my team, like I'd even start Singletary going against Detroit versus Damian Pierce at this point. Would you start Aaron Jones or Damian Pierce? No, that's why I stopped right there. Okay. I think I was still good. I think I was still like, look, Aaron Jones, the call is going to be like, he's kind of like old DJ Moore. Your ranking of 20 is wrong. Like he's either going to be five or 35. Like there's Aaron Jones doesn't finish 20. That's completely fair. I understand that. But you know, you got to rank him somewhere. I'm not ranking him at five. I'll tell you that much <laughs> because you need to play. With some of that upside. All right, I'll bump Pierce down to 19. I see what you're seeing. You can run on Miami, though. Like, that is their path in this game. Yes, Just keep yes. feeding him the ball. That's how they make this close. And then I would put uh, somebody in front of David Montgomery, even with Justin Fields, Jamal Williams. Like, I think the world needs to stop on Jamal Williams and just realize what Jamal Williams is. is he's a borderline RB1 every single week. Yes, it's touchdown reliant, but he hits it 
almost every, like he hits it like 80% of the time. Like they just continue to use him in this fashion. And against, I guess maybe the flip side is the Buffalo. So you'd knock him down a tear. So maybe down by Stevenson. But I think somewhere like at this point, we need to just put Jamal Williams inside the top 15. Like I've been having him inside the top 15. I've been right. And I'm, but actually I've still been wrong because last week he should have been what top five. And I'm not saying we should ever rank Jamal Williams top five ever, ever, ever. But against Buffalo, even I'd still put him inside as like he, even James Conner. Like, you really want to play James Conner over Jamal Williams at this point? Yeah, I would. Okay. I like, here's here's the problem with Jamal Williams because uh, we know it's going to be well now. Justin Jackson's getting involved, so it's like a three way split. Is that he scored three touchdowns last week and scored twenty two fantasy points? Like, that's not great yeah, because he scores that's, a touchdown every single. That's week. great, but, but but here's the thing: if he scores the one touchdown, that's not great. He needs to score like at least two in order to have. Good fantasy no. options. And like the, he gets all the work. I understand that. But he might end up being like right. nine for 46 in a touchdown. Like, great. You got me 10 points. I'd still take that, though. I'd still, I would just on the, like, look at the backfields we're talking about here. Okay. So let's say this week, Tony Pollard going against the Giants is tough. All right. So can you at least put him over Najee Harris? And I, I love that Najee Harris, like, we, I think you and I talked about it. Did I talked about it on so many shows that I don't even, know who I talked about it with. And I'm not victory lapping saying I knew Najee Harris was going to be great. I just said there's speculation of like, I could see an Antonio Gibbs in 2021 where that bye week was all he needed to get better from his injury. But there's still the risk that that's going to pop back up because it's not like it completely goes away without months of layoff, according to doctors. So the list Frank thing could come back for him being an issue. The Pittsburgh offensive line still stinks. Pittsburgh could go sideways any given week. It's Monday night football in Indianapolis, which, OK, he's got the biggest layoff of anybody. But Jamal Williams and Najee Harris. I know you have Jamal Williams behind him, but can I can I even talk you into Jamal Williams in that range? No. Just with Harris and okay. Warren being out, like we're penciling him in for 20 touches at least, it seems. And the fact that he got himself, without Warren around, got himself reinserted into the passing game, even if it's like two catches, three catches, four catches for not a ton of yards, that base is so important. Like the situation that I just gave you with Jamal Williams, if he gets 40 yards and a touchdown, does really nothing in the receiving game, it's like 10 points, 11 points. It's essentially like what Ramondre had in the receiving game last week. Just... When you're taking away so many touches from someone and having to rely on that touchdown, like Harris can get himself to 13 points in this game without scoring a touchdown. But I know that if they do score touchdowns and they get into the red zone or inside the five, he's the one who's going to be handling the majority of that work and all of the work on the ground unless Pickett ends up stealing it from him. So I still feel comfortable with his floor over all of this. I don't love this Buffalo matchup if Buffalo can. And listen, maybe Buffalo is going to start slow like they did last week against the Browns. And all of a sudden you can get Williams up to 50. 15 touches, then I'll be wrong. That's just not how I see that game going. Okay. Hey, look, I, I think Williams kind of falls into last year's uh, basically Ezekiel Elliott, although he had a little bit more passing game work. Uh, like Damian Harris last year, and every single week we even said that about Damian Harris, and then what do you do? He finishes a top 10 running back, and it's like, Damian Harris doesn't get passing game work. Damian Harris, 14 to 16 carries. Damian Harris scores a touchdown again. So I, I guess that's really where I'm going with Jamal Williams. All right, well, let's go to that entire 21 through 30 range. I have Antonio Gibson, the aforementioned Antonio Gibson at number 21, then Jamal Williams, Zeke, Samaj P. Ryan at number 24, when I'm assuming there's no Joe Mixon this week with the concussion. That could always change. But for now, I have him ruled as out and not in the rankings. Sanders, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco is a lot like Jamal Williams, by the way. Leonard Fournette, yeah. Donta Foreman, Raheem Mostert. After that, like you have playable guys like Michael Carter, Elijah Mitchell, Latavius Murray, who could end up, he could be higher in these rankings. We'll talk about him in a second. A.J. Dillon, Damian Harris, Gus Edwards, who I do have returning here. I have at number 36. DeAndre Swift, Kareem Hunt, Kieran Williams, Cordero Patterson. Bit worried about the, the Atlanta rushing attack. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Why? Because it's just everybody. It's four or people. It's, just, it's not it, working. It, it's four guys, <laughs> and now they're facing like a legitimately good run defense. And so this is the week where they finally go belly up on it. Yeah, this and Chase Young could be back too, by the way. Yeah, and now this will be the game where Patterson has like 18 carries for 200 yards and three touchdowns. <laughs> but hey, who could have saw that coming? Oh, that is very true. Uh, so going back up to your ranks, uh, the one I immediately noticed, and I, I understand their run defense is good, but is the Samaj P. Ryan because of the run defense or just because you're not a P. Ryan believer? Because I go back to P. Ryan 
Philly different Joe Mixon in past years. And he's basically been fringe RB1 every single time he's filled in for Joe Mixon. And no, I don't think he's scoring three touchdowns. I do respect the Titans' run defense, but I think he kind of falls into like the Aaron Jones, Antonio Gibson kind of conversation. And that's just a few spots, but there's nobody really taking work from Chris Evans is still, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris Evans still isn't back. So who else are they going to turn to? It's, was it, Traylon Williams? Is that the guy? Travion Travion Williams. Travion Williams, yeah. They ended up, it was 10 to 3 in the second half last week between those two. And maybe he gets ingrained a little bit more. I actually had a lot of trouble ranking P. Ryan. I'm, I, because initially when I saw that Mixon was, I was like, oh my God, you have like a top 10 guy on your hands. And I started doing the ranks. Like, would I really play him over Tony Pollard? It's like, no. Would I play him over Jeff Wilson? Like, Jeff Wilson seems pretty ingrained and he gets the best matchup yes. of the week. I don't yeah. love the matchup. I have him as the lowest end running back, too. Like, if you say, hey, he's better than Antonio Gibson, yeah. I, I can get behind that. You want to play him over Aaron Jones? Sure. Maybe even, da- would you go with P. Ryan or Damian Pierce? Hmm. I think I would go P. Ryan. Wilson. Better offense? Wilson. i go Wilson. Okay. Wilson! <laughs> Devin Singletary or <laughs> Samaj P. Ryan? Uh, wow. Devin Singletary's got Detroit. I got, I, 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 Although, God, I just feel like this is the week where it's like, oh, it's Devin Singletary. We're going to be okay. And then it's going to be like, oh, look, look, Naheem Hines got involved on 15 plays all of a sudden. Uh, I, I'd go Singletary, but I could say, if you want to go P. Ryan over Singletary, I wouldn't fault you for it. All right, I'm going to go. I'll bump him up to number 20, one spot ahead of Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is the week that no, Aaron Jones always does well in the weeks where no one thinks that he's going to do well. So he'll be running back one this week, by the way. Oh, I was just about to say <laughs> better than Eckler this week. Okay. Yeah. This is his three. This is a 30 point game. This is the one of the three that he gets every single year. What are, what would you do between White and Fournette? Because Gio Bernard is activated off injured reserve as well. Not that I think that he's going to like take away, but I mentioned this on the waiver wire show on Monday that if you think like, look, if it's 60 white, 44 net, or even flip that, that's great. Both those guys can be fantasy viable. But even if Bernard starts playing like 10% of the snaps, like it just, it takes away from their bottom line so much. White. And Gio, you know, is going to be there in passing situations. So it gets rid of their PPR floor as well. And maybe mm-hmm. Bernard doesn't end up playing and like, I'm just really overthinking this. But even, like I said, even if he gets like eight snaps during the game, like those could be eight passing downs, which are very valuable to both these guys' bottom line. Yeah, I think you look at where you have them ranked. Um, I would rank White over Fournette because as soon as this happened before the bye, the comparison I made, you already talked about the other two running backs. It's Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott now. It's Tony Pollard is Rashad White and Ezekiel Elliott is Leonard Fournette. They're lower because of the effect of this all the offensive line and the rushing game. And then you said, I, I do. I'm with you. I don't think Giovanni Bernard should be involved with White and Fournette, but they seem to like him. They seem to use him in the past. And as you said, even if it's just a minimum of like 10%, it still snaps that they're not out there on the field. It's a third option that's now on the field. At least with Pollard and Zeke, you don't have a third option really get it. I mean, Malik Davis, what, two touches? Like every once every blue moon. Uh, so where you have them, I think, is fair. Uh, Rashad White versus Miles Sanders versus Zeke versus P. Ryan. I'd probably I, against Cleveland, and then that's that's such a good matchup. Like, I feel better about Rashad White than I do Zeke. Although, no, wait, he's facing the Giants. Nah, see, they're in the same conversation. There we this go, is, yeah. This is what happens when you have all 16 team, or sixteen games, man. This is like, it, it, it makes it tough. I think where you have him is a fair spot. What would you do with Latavius Murray? So Chase Edmonds has a high ankle sprain. He's out at least four weeks, more than likely. Melvin Gordon. I would play him over Foreman. He's gone. So you would play him over Foreman? Yeah. It's against Carolina. And well, he, he's, he's, he's nobody on, else is he's involved. On, I mean, they're playing each other in this game. Yeah, yeah. But who who do you think would be the next man up? Uh, for for Denver or right now? Yeah. Well, Edmonds is hurt. So, um, crap. I, I know. Why did you just brain fart me? I got to pull up my waivers now. I got to look at it. Even mention it. Good God. Because it's Edmonds and then... Give me a second. Let me scroll down to it as we do this live. Marlon Mack. Oh, Marlon oh, my, Mack. oh my God. He's yeah, back. They, he's back. They, I know. And now he's going to be the greatest. Like everybody, he, put him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's the next one up. Uh, he, he'll actually just be active. I could see this just being out there as like 30% of the touches. So you would bump Murray to above Foreman. So one spot yes. behind Fournette, number 29. If it's my team, I'd probably still play Fournette just because of the matchup. Yeah. 
Like, f- this is for could get two touchdowns on 40 yards in this matchup. You have any feel for the Jets' backfield? Yeah. <laughs> get the quarterback the hell away from them. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's still Michael Carter. And it's still Michael Carter over James Robinson. This is, so we just talked about it. The Bucks are the slightly worse version of the Cowboys' backfield. This is the bargain dollar DVD section in Walmart version of the Cowboys. James Robinson is Ezekiel Elliott, but way, 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 way worse. Even if it's Joe Flacco, even if they go away from Zach Wilson, it's not going to be that much better where Michael Carter would probably bump up, especially if it's Joe Flacco. Michael Carter would be in the Rashad White conversation, but I wouldn't put James James Robinson all of a sudden into like, oh, yeah, he's like Zeke. He's probably going to get a touchdown. No, it's still the Jets. It's still probably risky-ish to get into that range. By the way, when rookie wide receivers are calling you up, poof, they, they should have moved on long ago. You know who has better numbers in the seven games? They're both terrible. They're both god-awful numbers. But Baker Mayfield has better numbers than Zach Wilson does in the seven games. Well, that's not good because I've watched enough Carolina with Baker starting this year to know that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad. It's, it's really bad. So, yeah, they need to move on from this. Hopefully they do. do, you, do you I feel th- bad for the kid, though, because at the same time, it's a, it's, you still have feel bad for the person. I'm trying to. I'm looking at my quarterback rankings right now. It's like, yeah, I, I most likely don't have Stafford in here, but that I have 32 quarterbacks ranked, but Stafford or Walford or Perkins aren't involved in it. So I have someone doubled up twice. I guess that seems stupid. Oh, wait, did you did you put Kyler N. McCoy in? Oh, I may have. No, I didn't. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know what's going no, on. So, someone's name is in there twice, and I just I'm looking at it. I can't figure it out. I hate when that happens. <laughs> I'm like, look, did it's, you miss it's, number? It's, it's Matt. Possibly? R- it's Matt Ryan. Who do you think starts? Okay. I had Matt Ryan in twice. Who do you think starts at quarterback for the Rams? Do you think it's going to be Bryce Perkins? Mm, if Wolford's not ready. I mean, that's all they could really go to. That's what he was there for is that that's they were trying to use him. So, yeah. But I mean, if, if Wolford's ready, it would just they would go back to him. What would you who do you think is better for the <laughs> running backs? I think it's Perkins, right? Mm, it doesn't matter. That's what it comes I, down no, to. I, I actually do think it matters a little bit because where Perkins, like they're just going to run RPOs all day with Perkins. Like that's what we saw. No, this is why I don't think game. it matters because I don't think we, there's nobody to trust. The, the Cam, Cam Akers thing means nothing. This is Cam, Cam Akers here. The cup means nothing. Like Daryl Henderson was out there to start, did nothing wrong and then disappears. And then it's Cam Akers. And then Kyron Williams looked better than Cam Akers in that game. And what if they turn to Kyron Williams this week? What if they go back to Daryl Henderson? What if it's a full-blown committee in the worst offense outside of like some of the like Carolina? Like, I don't want anybody. And this is this is you know what it is? Is the Denver Broncos we talked about for weeks. I don't want anybody on the Broncos because I don't want to figure it out. I know somebody's probably gonna finish inside the top 20, but it's two out of three chances you're gonna be wrong. And that's why I mean that's why I was tongue in cheek saying it doesn't matter. Yeah, two out of three chances you're gonna be wrong, and even if you're right, it's probably still wrong. <laughs> See? So there you go. So that's why I was saying it doesn't matter. Any other running backs you think we should talk about? <sighs> Not really. I mean, the, the fa- I'm surprised you're as low as you are on Gus Edwards. Is it because you don't think he's going to get the full workload in his first game back? Correct. Okay. That's that'd be, the question. That, was, that, that, that'd be, that would be my concern. Because <laughs> I have Drake at just, like, just like five spots behind him. I could still see, see it being somewhat of a split. Although I do think that they would rely on Gus in the red zone. But they're not getting the red zone very often. Mm, they're not. And also on top of it, like this almost kind of feels like if Gus Edwards isn't 100% practicing on Friday, I kind of feel like this is the Drake. Because every time you trust the Drake... He fails you every time nobody has any interest in him. It's when he gets his hundred yards and change. So it's like if Gus Edwards is still a little banged up on Friday, but actually starting, that probably means Drake's going to go off for a hundred yards and a touchdown. Well, I thought that last week that I played him on DraftKings and he didn't do that at all. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because anybody tried to trust him. There was nobody else that should have been involved. And then he sucks. Where would you move Drake up to if you knew that Edwards was going to be out? You need to bring back worse place because that's where Drake deserves to be. Uh... Drake would be in the same conversation as Latavius Murray for me. I I can't trust. He's done it to us too many times. I feel like well, it's like not the boy that cried wolf, but it's like the fool me once or like what? It, he keeps keeps doing it to us. I can't I can't put him higher than Latavius Murray. Okay. Wide receivers, top twenty for week number twelve. It's nice to have eight of our top twenty back. I know my fantasy team, after scoring like zero points last week, is very uh, very happy that. 
<laughs> who, who did I have at? Well, I lost Cup, but I also had Kirk, Evans, and Lockett. Like, it was a real tough scene starting Alec Pierce and Ben Skoranek <laughs> at receiver. Uh, oh, did- I fell into Traylon Burks. I actually had a nice fill-in. There you go. That, that, that would have worked out much better for me, uh, rather than starting one point Skoranek. Tyreek Hill, I have at number <laughs> one, Justin Jefferson on Thanksgiving Day against the Patriots. Tougher matchup, but what are you going to bench Justin Jefferson? Give your head a shake. Diggs, Adams, Lamb, Hopkins, Amon Ra St. Brown, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, Amari Cooper is the top 10. There's one change that I have made that is on the next board. I have Christian Kirk at 11, Pittman, Evans, A.J. Brown, T. Higgins with no Jamar Chase, expected McLaurin, Metcalf, Tower Lockett. I initially had Rondell Moore at number 19. Obviously, he sustained the groin injury on Monday Night Football, so I don't think that he's going to play. So I put Dorch in lower in the rankings. Rondell Moore no longer number 19. Number 19 is now Chris Godwin. Actually, no, number 18 is now Chris. Number 19 is Chris Godwin. Gabe Davis is there. Uh, then it's like Debo. I, I still have Debo over Ayuk by four spots, by the way. I know that Ayuk did all the damage touchdown-wise, but Debo got himself involved on Monday night in the way that you would want to see. Sure, but let me ask you this, because you and I had this conversation last week, and I sat here and said, why aren't we putting Ayuk higher? Actually, this is the conversation we've kind of had for like two weeks now, and Ayuk was better again but you're right it was touchdown it was much less production it was higher in the touchdown department which is why it worked out so i am not victory lapping you hey, on hey, this hey hey debo had more D- i scored two touchdowns and debo had more fantasy points Did it? i thought he was just behind him now let's see two 14 16 are you doing full po- full point ppr yeah in full point are you P- doing uh, half point uh, ppr uh, let's see we can even do half point so he had 16 or in full it's easier for me to calculate full point when i'm just looking at it no i'm looking right now all right, so 14. D- Debo, 18.9. Oh, yeah. Ayuk, 16.3. So there you go. So th- this is what I was going to say. Even if Ayuk had more, I wanted to ask you this question because this is two games in a row now. Do you think Debo's back to being Debo because of Christian McCaffrey? Like, Debo was erased from being, like, he was a wide receiver too. We sat here on your rank show talking about this. We talked about it everywhere. He's been talking about it. He wasn't getting any run. He was getting one carry, two carries. Is Ayuk was more involved in the passing game, and then all of a sudden Christian McCaffrey comes in the last two games. It's last year's Debo all of a sudden. So, do you think this is like the the new offense that's back? This is what we should be expecting for Debo going forward. I'm assuming by your rankings it is, but I mean, how much faith are you going to put in like the fact that like Debo's back to being Debo? Well, I'm not all the way there. That's why he's at number 21. If I had all the faith okay. that he was back to Debo deep being Debo, it'd be like number four. <laughs> okay. Oh, so okay, that's I th- fair. I, I think that you're gonna you're gonna get these upside games, and I don't even think what we saw Monday night was the actual upside of what you can get from Debo. But listen, if you want to play the higher floor guy, I think Ayuk is the correct answer in this. But if you're shooting for upside, Debo is the one who might score forty fantasy points. Sure. So, with that being said. Uh, so I would, that's one spot, but I would play actually two spots. I play Debo over Chris Godwin at this point, And I love some Chris Godwin. Chris and Godwin's got to score touchdowns should... at some point. It's got to happen. Does he? I think so. Does he? Or maybe this is like the we old said Julio, about Jones, Julio Jones, Jones for years. <laughs> I know. There you go. Said it about, look, Kyle Pitts last year. All year long. I mean, he's got, he's got a thousand yards. He's got to get a touchdown at some point. And good job. He got one. Last year, Cole Komet had to get a touchdown at some point, but he didn't. Miles Sanders had to get a touchdown at some point, and he didn't. I'm just saying, like, he doesn't necessarily, like, he is the floor of all floors. He is the new Jacoby Myers, although he's been around for a while. He's just basically go out there and get your couple catches in 80 yards every single week. Congratulations. Which, so, which is great, though. Being, like, like, but that, that's a, you know that's the type of player that I like. Like, let's pencil him in for six for 70, and then there's upside after that. Like, that's, that's hard to beat, man. Right. It, it is, but I think Debo is in the conversation of being even over Tyra Lockett, and it's a good matchup at this no, point, a, but Tyra it, Lockett it is Debo, a It is a lovely matchup for the Seahawks. This it week. is. I just say, like, they're kind of in similar boats if you look at Tyra Lockett's performance. Anyway, I would definitively, Debo's ceiling and what he's been doing even as a floor, I think is better than Gabe Davis at this point. Gabe Davis is exactly like, it's Deshaun Jackson. It's you get 20 or four. Like there's just doesn't seem to be in between with Gabe Davis. So uh, that's Debo would be higher for me. That's why I brought up the question to say that, like even in my rankings, and I've been hesitant to put him inside the top 15 because of the recent use until last week and now yesterday on top of it. So I'm convinced to move him up a few more spots. I'm not putting him in the wide receiver one conversation yet, 
but I feel better about him at this point. And San Francisco's got New Orleans, who's still missing. I mean, is Lattimore even going to play this year? Or I don't, is he going I to don't. hang out with Michael Thomas? Yeah, he's on the Michael Thomas plan. <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the Saints defense has just been pretty awful this year. That throw Stafford had against them to 2-2 Atwell was so nice last week. There was no defending that. <laughs> no one in the league could have defended that. <laughs> I mean, it's 2-2 Atwell, man. How do you defend 2-2 Atwell? He's too fast, but just you get those glimpses of Stafford. Too fast? Yeah, he, yeah, he's too, too fast. You get those glimpses of Stafford. Like Obviously, he hasn't been 100% with his elbow injury all year, and now he's double concussed, so he might not come back and play the rest of the season, like, especially if they're just writing it off. And I know they don't. Do they have their pick? They don't have their pick, right? The Lions have their pick? No, or was that done? <laughs> they NBA, they NBA this. I don't think they have like a first round pick for the next three years. No, I, I, they, I think they actually Maybe might. Ha- I, I think they actually might have their pick this year. I think I've asked this like every week on the spread pick show. And then I look it up and then I, I completely forget. Uh, 2013. <laughs> yeah. The lions have their pick. Yeah. But they have, uh, they, have a, they have a second round. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? The lions having the Rams pick is actually better than the lions pick. Yeah, right now. Oh, three in a row. They're in, se- they're in second <laughs> in the north. How about that? I know. Knocking off your mighty giants. It happens. So the 21, well, we'll see this week. I actually picked them again. By the way, did you week. hammer the living hell out of that spread when it came out on Monday? Which one? The Cowboys. It started at only seven and a half. I saw uh, when, we did the, when we did the show on Sunday night, it was eight and a half. And now it's nine. I'm st- I'm still, I like the Giants. They, I like lo- the Giants. They, they lost a tour. You like the Giants to cover that spread? I do. Ah, uh, I don't. The they wor- lost the door. The world is going to be on Dallas in this spot, and like, it, this, I know this, that's this, what I'm going to get before this, it moves. This reeks of. I don't know if it'll break through ten because you know ten being a key number and such. But I just yeah. feel like the Giants muck muck it up. As, like Dallas is going to be very content with running their high efficiency, 17 play, get every third and one, run the ball down their throat, shorten the game that way, limit the turnovers. And they're going to have like Daniel Jones, 42-yard run. Barkley breaks a big one. It just reeks of one of those stupid Giants games. I don't think they're going to win, but now that you're asking me to cover <laughs> nine and a half points or something, I think they can do that. Uh, I really don't think they can. They lost the Dory Jack, which we're talking about wide receivers. They lost the Dory Jackson, and they lost, and the name just escaped me, who else they lost in that game. So they're down to Darnay Holmes, a rookie who's been bleh, uh, the rookie that just made his debut last week and because he had been hurt. And all these guys, if like their grades are in the 40s and 50s, like this reeks to me as in the Cowboys are going to put up 35 before the fourth quarter. Yeah, and then the Giants bring it all back. Richie James Jr., Darius Slayton. You, you know you're relying on, on Daniel Jones to do this. Hey, Daniel Jones scored like 30 fantasy points last week. You know what would be amazing? Hold on, hold on. You know what would be so terrific? If in the fourth quarter and they're down by like 14 or 15 and Daniel Jones rips off that 60-yard run and trips himself up at the end of the game and then they don't cover. Oh, that'd be sad because I'm going to have money on the Giants. I don't want that to happen. I'm going to love it when it happens. How dare you take my money? 21 (laughs) through 40. I have bumped Debo to number 20. So Gabriel Davis now comes in at number 21. Then Keenan Allen, George Pickens, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Ayuk, Jacoby Myers, Garrett Wilson, Cortland Sutton, Josh Palmer. Uh, And I have no Mike Williams in the rankings, by the way. Demarcus Robinson, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Boyd, Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, Darius Slayton, Darnell Mooney, Alan Lazard, Perry Campbell, Drake London at number 40, and then it's like Nico Collins, Dorch, Mac, Mac Collins, Traylon Burks, Curtis Samuel, Jarvis Landry, my guy, Randall Cobb at number 46, Robert Woods, Devontae Parker, Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, Alec Pierce, Sky Moore, Brennan Cooks. You probably don't need to go down this far in the wide receivers this week. You probably stick up top. The one I was looking at, even what I was telling you before, like, yeah, I did these rankings. Then I looked at it, I was like, that doesn't look right. Do I have Demarcus Robinson way too high? <laughs> Um, uh, possibly not, but that's not who I want to talk about. But we, can we, do you want to talk about him first or the name that jumped out to me? The one that jumped out to you, then we'll circle back to that. Okay. Cause I actually do have a tweet that I put out about Demarcus Robinson while I say maybe it's not too high, but it's probably still a little bit too high, but it's 29 Josh Palmer. You can call me crazy. Top 20. If there is no Mike Williams, he is 100% top 20. Keenan Allen is back, and you know Keenan Allen plays the Keenan Allen role. Josh Palmer in the Mike Williams role is a top 20 wide receiver. When he plays the Keenan Allen role, that's when he's not, because that's not who he is. He's the outside Mike Williams receiver, and 
again, I've been right about Josh Palmer. I would play Josh Palmer over Gabe Davis. That's how far I'm going with Josh Palmer. I continue to trust him when he's in this role. So if you don't have Mike Williams, Josh Palmer's a top 20 wide receiver. Would you play Josh Palmer over Keenan Allen? Yes. Really? So how? So yes, I'll, Keen, I'll, I'll, Keen, I'll roll with here's, you. Here's the comparison. I'll, okay. Here's the, here's the comparison. And it, it, it could be very close. I think Josh Palmer is Mike Evans. Keenan Allen is Chris Godwin. Okay. I can buy that. It's a very good, very good comp. I'll bump down Allen a spot behind George Pickens. Is Deontay Johnson getting written out of this offense? It seemed, like That was the one thing is that before they got rid of Claypool, it was like, hey, at least he's getting all the targets. He's only catching 50% of them, but that's got to come back around. There's got to be some more rapport. Deontay Johnson's too good, and all of a sudden, it's like starting to drop off. It's like Claypool left, and instead of just being Deontay Johnson, like he doesn't even need more. It's just still being Deontay Johnson, still leading the team by far. It's now Kenny Pickett's kind of even spreading around even more, going to air fryer mouth, or as you say, fire mouth. Uh, like it's just, I do have legitimate concerns, and I'm a Deontay Johnson guy, you know that. But where you have him at 31, I'm okay with, which is one spot behind Demarcus Robinson, who yeah, I think is a little bit high. But I noticed this, and I said maybe he's the answer, not Duvernay. So when Bateman was on the field versus off, Duvernay had better numbers by far because Demarcus Robinson was barely on the field when Bateman was, but since they, Bateman's been off, Duvernay has fewer targets, fewer receptions, fewer yards, fewer team target percentage, fewer team air yards, and fewer yards per route run, 1.1 to 1.6. Demarcus Robinson's been the answer since Bateman left. All right, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good with keeping him there at number 30. You think we get Jerry Judy? I mean, I'd still move him around. I'd still play Christian Watson over him. I'd still play Darius Slayton over him. Okay, so I'll, so that, I'll, I'll put, bump him down because that was the one that kind of stuck out to me when I saw the name. I, I would play Demarcus Robinson over Darnell Mooney, but that's me. I put him with Drake London. Demarcus yeah. Robinson and Drake London are a very good comp because Drake London with no Kyle Pitts, it'd be like, oh, okay, it gets all the targets. It still only means what, 11? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's still in his offense. I'll put Robinson at 35. I think it's a happy medium because I do feel really good about him this week. But oh, with Chris, I can't play him over Alan Lazard. I, I can. I'm, I'm going to do it. So that was easy. Um, <laughs> Christian Watson, number 33. Should he be higher? Because I have all of the Packers receivers kind of jumbled. I have Watson at 33, Lazard at 37, and I have Randall Cobb, who did come back to take his share last week, coming off of IR. We know that. We know that Rodgers loves him. I have him in number 46. That I think it's hard to pick. Listen, obviously Cobb is behind both of those guys, but you just kind of have to flip right. a coin between Lazard and Watson, it seems. Yeah, but Lazard did have the team target percentage. He did lead. He was still the number one, uh, just similar to Deontay Johnson thing. Like, there, the, the connection wasn't there. There was a few throws with Aaron Rodgers that – Lazard had to adjust back for, and it just didn't happen for him. And there was one catch that Lazard should have made. So I'm not saying all this to say Lazard should definitively be over Watson. I think Watson still has the higher ceiling, but I think Lazard has the better floor to go back to the Tampa Bay's conversation. I think Watson is Mike Evans, and Alan Lazard is is uh, Chris Godwin. But there's more people involved. You mentioned that Randall Cobb kind of comes back. And I was saying, like, last somebody asked me about him, I was like, he's a non-factor. He's a non-factor for the top two are still going to get theirs. The Lazard and Watson are still going to get theirs. I just meant, like, Randall Cobb, you're still probably not starting him in any league. But what you just said still matters because whereas if it's just Lazard and Watson and there's no Cobb and there's no Dobbs still and there's no, like, and you're talking about your third option is going to be Aaron Jones or Robert Tanyan, then you put them inside the top 30, both of them. Uh, where you have them, I think, is a fair spot. I still like Lazard more than Mooney and Slayton um, and Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith has, like, two good games, maybe three if you want, depending on your scoring. Um, but I would play both of them over those. Uh, but that really just comes down to, like, some preference in that range. All right. Let's move on to quarterback for the week. at Mahomes at number one, Jalen Hurts at number two. And then Josh Allen, Tua, Herbert, Lamar, Tom Brady, Geno Smith, Kyler Murray, Tyler Heineke. I go Dak, then Justin Fields. I don't think that Justin Fields is going to play, but as of right now, he's either day-to-day or out for the season, which is a very odd distinction. He has has a separated shoulder. He's not going to be running. So, but here's my question. So that's what I was going to say is even if he plays and he's clear, like you don't feel better about him because of that risk. That's what I was going to say, because I feel like Justin Fields should be top five you think he's going to play unless that's where no I, even if he plays like I, I wanted to take him out of where i had him at number 12 and like try to re-rank him like 
if he's not running, he's useless. He's not going to pass against this Jets defense. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? And it, it, it's more likely that he gets banged up if he plays and probably has to leave the game. Sure. I could, I could definitely see that. So I'm looking at your ranks uh, to go back. I, I know we're already heading into 11 through 20, but real quickly to go to your top. I get... I, I don't want to do it because it's just like, all right, well, this is the game that he runs for 90 yards and a touchdown. Lamar? But we have a Lamar Jackson problem. Like, there's, he has one game with two touchdowns since week three. One. And they were both passing touchdowns. That was actually his first rushing touchdown in forever. Uh, he's been sandwiched since week three. So, week four to now, he's QB 15 on the year, sandwiched between Brissett and Mariota. It's not working in this offense. Uh, in Cleveland, I'm starting Tom Brady, unless the weather's messy. And I could even see having a conversation of Geno and Kyler, especially Kyler, if healthy, with DeAndre Hopkins back. I think Mar Jackson's bottom 10 versus being top five-ish range. I know he's at six, but you get my point. Um, I think we have legitimate concerns about Lamar Jackson with the fact that he's throwing to Demarcus Robinson and dudes. And Mark Andrews is back. I think that there was a there were some limiting factors last week coming off the bye. Mark I, Andrews I, is hundred percent. I don't think he was hundred percent bad. Watching him run around because he came back two weeks. Ago. Okay, he didn't come back two weeks ago. Okay. He, didn't, he didn't play the two weeks ago. He got the he got the night off. Then he had the bye week, and then he came back. He still didn't and, look hundred percent. Like he was a game time decision. And yeah, Lamar okay. and Lamar was like not practicing all week with an illness. Like he should be okay this time around. I will bump him down because I do see but, the same concerns that you see. I'll put yeah. him behind Gino. I'm going to keep him above Kyler who I do think ends up going this week. It's a good matchup, especially on the ground, but he's still dealing with the hamstring that he might not be all the way back, so we might not get like the floor of rushing yards that we want to see okay. out of Kyler. Well, plus they talked about... Like, so we're not just calling this dude out before Monday Night Football? Did you see that? Were you watching and have the audio on where they're just like talking about his leadership and question marks and all this type of stuff now too? No. I, I can assure you I did not watch huh. the Monday Night Football pregame show. So I mean, I mean, I had the game on. Like, I would, you wait till all the way up to like eight fifteen to put the game on? No, I watch it in the morning. Oh, well then, never mind. And then I zip through it. I apologize. I watch a play. Go I mean, to the that next is the play. better way. Yeah. Very short. These By football the way, that's, games. That's still the best way to like to catch up on all the games. That is like the most magical thing ever created. I know it's fantastic. That way, I don't need. It's very comes like. Listen, you're on Eastern time. I'm a time zone ahead of that. Like the game doesn't end till like one thirty. It's like I'll just wake up early and watch. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you agree with my Tyler Heineke stream him this week? You know I love some Tyler Heineke. You're never going to get me to disagree with Tyler Heineke unless you say that he should be benched for Carson Wentz. So I don't have a problem with it, especially with the matchup against Atlanta. I think that I. Can't really find too many faults. Uh, I think Joe Burrow I would have higher. You, I, I, I mean, play. Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe Burrow is the pure talent play here. Like, you're just banking on the talent of Burrow beats this Tennessee defense, which has been really good. It is, but, I mean, Joe Burrow over a broken Justin Fields, as you just mentioned. Well, I already bumped Justin Fields down to 19 because I, I only put him there oh, to okay. have this conversation. Okay. And I love Heineke. I just... I don't. If it's my team, I don't know if I can bench Burrow for Heineke. And did, I, you know, didn't I didn't Heineke. didn't realize that you were a gutless fantasy manager. <laughs> I'm a gutless ODU graduate like Tyler Heineke. How about that? There you go. So you should be playing Heineke this week. So yeah, I'd play him over Dak and Burrow. If you don't want to, I get it. Uh, even Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones's floor has been pretty pretty nice lately. Mm, yeah, but the two games before last week, it had been pretty. Uh, he could kind of drop back down a little bit. He was in like the mid teens. There's always he? that risk. Yeah, but I, I do like him in this. What should be a big catch up situation, though. And that's where we differ. I don't. I don't like Daniel Jones catch up. I just you just saw it last week. I do not like it when Daniel when Daniel Jones is asked to have the game on his shoulders. Get me the hell away. When he's like, just keep it close and run, and you don't have to do too much. That's when he runs for like sixty yards. You just do your thing, dude. Whatever. That's fine. When you need Daniel Jones to do something, it's Kenyon Drake. When you need him to be out there and perform for you, that's when it's going sideways. I am so off Daniel Jones and the Giants. I hope I'm wrong, but I am so off the Giants this week. Tight end rankings for week number 12. We got Kelsey at number one. Mark Andrews at number two. Hawkinson, Firemouth, Dalton Schultz, Kittle, me Timbers, Evan Ingram, Greg Dulcic, Foster Moreau, David Njoku at 10. And then you got like Dawson Knox, Cole Komet, Hayden Hurst, Jawan Johnson. We got Jerry Everett coming back, so I put him at number 15. Tower Higby. 
Logan Thomas, Gasicki, Trey McBride, Austin Hooper. Were you surprised that we didn't get like more Trey McBride in that game last night? Four for 14 wasn't really uh, Yeah, I was. I, I really was. Uh, I thought we'd see more, but you know, they mixed in everybody. I mean, the return of Steven Anderson from years and years and years and years ago. And Max Houston Williams. Texans. Double X Max. Uh, double X Max. I, I just, uh, Juwan Johnson should be higher. Juwan Johnson at this point is just the top 10 t- tight end at this point. I don't even care that Taysom Hill's involved. And they tweeted out this morning that Taysom Hill's not getting utilized enough. Shut the hell up. But whatever it is, Juwan Johnson, he just goes out there and gets his 50 yards and a touchdown almost every single week at this point. He's better. He's been better than da- Dawson Knox, who that's what we rely on Dawson Knox for. Yeah, say Dawson Knox has actually become a bit more consistent the past few weeks. That's why I actually bumped him up a little bit because usually I'm on the same page as you, but just kind of looking back at what he's been up to, he's becoming more of a, I wouldn't say focal point of this offense, but his teams work to try to limit Diggs and try to limit Gabe Davis. They just kind of got away from McKenzie. So he's been like seven for 70, six for 57. Uh, before that, he was four for 25, but then he had touchdowns the two weeks before it I really don't like this Saints against the Niners that that worries me okay that's certainly fair but in that range um I obviously you're not are you really playing Cole Komet with Justin Fields broken or even without Justin Fields over Jawan Johnson yeah I mean I mean I did, didn't realize you were married to Jawan Johnson do, do, do you do you know who the backup is for Justin Fields it's Simeon in a revenge situation isn't it yes there we go. That <laughs> guy loves Trevor throwing tight ends. I just, if you want to play that game, go ahead. No, I just, I mean, I'll if, play, if, if I'll play Juana, man. If, if, if Fields has to pass, I mean, he's probably going to pass to commit. Yeah, that's what, but I said, if there is no Justin Fields. Yeah, then you have Simeon. He can pass to commit. He can't pass, period. Guys who run short routes over the middle are how you score fantasy points against the Jets. Like the, the outside guys are going to be useless in the spot. Sure. So that's why I'm I, not touching. I, is, I listen. Come at it 12. Like after that, you're, you're in I mean, a we're nitpicking crowd. tight ends. All right. Let's do, yeah. de- let's do defenses then. How about that? I got Dallas at number one. <laughs> Good. See, there you go. Uh, Dallas, Miami, San Francisco, Jets, Washington, top five. Mm, yeah. I like it so far. Chiefs, Broncos, Patriots, Bills, Steelers, five through 10. I'd play the Chiefs over Washington. That's nitpicky. Yeah, that's one spot. Uh, I'll stick with what I had. Given. I know. Then I got Indy, Chicago, yeah. Baltimore, Seattle, Philadelphia as the next five. Mm. Baltimore's defense is back to being Baltimore's defense. I play Baltimore's defense over Pittsburgh. Even Matt Ryan. I play Baltimore's defense over, over Pittsburgh at this point. The issue is, like, how many points did Baltimore's D score last week against Carolina? I feel like it wasn't all that much. Quite a bit. Was it? No, it was. It was, qu- yeah. What, they scored like 12? And they, they absolutely mm, dominated that game. And they they were I'm pretty sure they were one of the best scoring defenses last week. I think so. They were number three last week. They were only behind the Falcons and Commanders last week. Yeah, but how many points did they score? Uh, what is your site that you play on? That That's the problem. So many sites do it so differently. Uh, let's see. Last week, week 11, defenses, Commanders, Patriots, Cowboys, Ravens. Ravens scored 16, I guess. They had four sacks against yeah. Baker. And I don't know. I just think Jacksonville Jacksonville might might end up turning the ball over more, but they're actually going to move the ball against the Ravens defense. They don't get to play Baker Mayfield every week. Sure, but also Patriots defense versus Kirk Cousins. It's not like the Patriots defense has been anything but like consistent. Patriots. I'm just saying. Pa- Baltimore's the, the Patriots Baltimore's Ravens defense. Patriots is going to get at you. I'll tell you that much. They are, but uh, oh wait, no. Keep the Patriots there. You know why? Cousins and Kirk Cousins in prime time. There you go. Yep. There you go. Move move the Patriots up to number one. I'd be curious. Who do you think the highest scoring defense is this year? I uh, actually, it's not the Patriots are up there. The Patriots are number I one. I think it's Patriots, Cowboys, Eagles. One, they, two, three. What site do you use for yours? I'm just looking at ESPN right now. Okay. Because I usually default to like. NFL because they're a little bit more conservative on their defensive scoring. It depends on your site. So that's, but yeah, the NFL has the same thing. Patriots, Cowboys, Eagles, Cardinals, Ravens. Ravens are all the way up to five after their slow start. Really? That that's a huge discrepancy because the Ravens on ESPN are ESPN. seven. Because Jets, Niners, Let's Bills see. are in between them. The Commanders do sneakily on, up there as well. They're the same on Yahoo. 
Ravens are five on Yahoo. Okay. That's why I don't go to ESPN. ESPN's defense is a little different inherently than most. Oh, okay. Well, that's just what I was looking at. I had pulled yeah. up on my screen. Hey. All right. Not going to move them. I think Jacksonville. I mean, it's okay. a four-point game. Um, and I know that Trevor Lord should be able to at least get first down. Scoring, that would, I don't know. Would you, move, would you move the Bears defense down if it's Joe Flacco? No. <laughs> it's actually better <laughs> for the Bears D if it's Joe Flacco because he might actually throw the ball. Yeah, and, but he's elite. No, but I, I still... <laughs> It's hard to get. I, I put Baltimore at ten. I'm holding a Baltimore at ten. It, it's hard to score fantasy points against Zach Wilson when they don't let him throw. It's just a bunch of three and outs and handoffs. Like that's great and everything, but the Patriots' D last week wouldn't well, have. I mean, they sacked him a bunch, but until they scored that return touchdown, that's why they finished number one. Well, so I was gonna say real quickly, not to harp too much on defenses, but that depend. This is why I tell people a lot of times: look at your site because there are some. And some people, even the commissioner, might have changed the settings. There are some where, like, you get a lot more points for limiting points than you do on other sites. So holding a team to six points might in, uh, automatically put the team as a double-digit scoring defense. Oh, really? Well, what is it? I know that if you score between, like, one and six against in my league, it's, like, seven points or something. It's ten for a shutout, seven for that. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit. If you just think about that right there, I mean, seven almost, what do you have to do? Like get two sacks and interception and you're already double digits. Yeah, but how, right how, how often are you seeing teams hold teams between one and six points? I'm saying it just, doesn't you, happen you, often. You never play for that. Like that's not something you can play for. But what I was going to, I was making your argument for you for the Bears going as against Zach Wilson is that that's why it'd be appealing if it was Zach Wilson and less appealing if it was Joe Flacco. If your score, if your sites leans more towards holding points down. Listen, Zach Wilson's going to try to throw the ball to the other team at least twice during the game. It's whether they catch it or not, as we saw last week. But with Flacco... You just keep making every argument possible for no, the Bears. Listen, I, I like the Bears' defense because going against the Jets' offense either way is great because Flacco is going to throw the ball like 50 times, which is fantastic news. You can go at him. With Zach Wilson, you know, he's going to give you a chance at a pick six. So either way, I think you're fine. Why wouldn't it be Mike White? Okay. I, I, it might be. It's going to be Zach Wilson. And it was, it's going to be sad. And then... And then it's it's in the middle ground. Mike White's basically like if Wilson and Flacco had a kid. Oh, well, that's interesting. He's in the Hall of Fame, you know. I know. Along with Marlon Mack. <laughs> yeah, no, but Mike White's actually in the Hall of Fame. Is he? Yeah. Oh, because of the... Cause, oh, yeah. Well, so he's not in the Hall... Well, is, well, his, is he in the Hall of Fame? Well, his jersey's in the Hall of Fame. That's what I'm saying. That's his jersey. Like, I don't know if it doesn't make he's in the Hall of Fame. Because, like, when I say he's in the Hall of Fame, I think, like, you got put in the Hall of Fame. I think they just kind of put his jersey in the Hall of Fame because of what happened. Well, his name's on it, and I'm sure when he retires in, like, a year when he's out of the league, he's just going to go stand next to it and greet people as they walk by. <laughs> he's going to get his body bronzed and just yeah. stand next to it. He'll, he'll be like the, the robot mime from Euro Trip, but with bronze. Or the guy that you see in Times Square. Just... Yeah, same deal. Anyway, Jake Seely at All In Kid on Twitter, theathletic.com. You will have everything current until Thursday morning, and then you'll come back on Sunday morning for your rankings? Yep, I'm going to update the ranks before the games kick off on Thursday and update after that because that's one of those days where we might not know. And then, yeah, a little bit of a breather through Friday and Saturday. Celebrate the birthday, and then I'll be back Sunday morning. All right, well, happy birthday from me and everyone at the Pat Mayo Experience and the Mayo Media family. Have a great holiday. Same with everyone out there. Have yourselves a great holiday. Remember to smash the like button. Tune in 10 a.m. Eastern on Thanksgiving morning if you got nothing to do on the YouTube channel for the Best Bet Show, but we have all regular content all week already. Playing the listeners' leagues, they're down in the description. Have a safe holiday. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next week. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!